So what I want to do is just finish with one example where we run that algorithm start to finish. And you'll see it's a lot quicker to do now that we know all the steps and the reasons why we're doing them. So we want to find the APs and the BCs. So we do a DFS spanning tree. We're going to root at, we can pick any root we want. So anyone whatsoever, feel free to pick a different one if you want, or the same one I pick. I'm just going to pick F, I'll pick sort of the vertex that's right in the middle. Root it at F, and we need a vertex ordering. We will assume alphabetical ordering. You can assume any ordering you want as well. So there's a lot of flexibility here in implementing this algorithm. You can choose your root to be any vertex, and you can order your vertices in any way you want, just as long as you keep that order as you go through the DFS algorithm. So that means we're starting at F, and we're going to build our DFS from that. So we'll go through this pretty quickly. So what does DFS do from F? Well, we pick the smallest neighbor, and that's C, and then label our edge. That's our first edge we've taken. And so then from C, now we pick the smallest neighbor, that's G, so that's edge number two. Smallest neighbor of G is H, so we go off to H, that's going to be three. Smallest neighbor of H is K, so that's edge four. We're at a dead end now, so we backtrack back to H, and then smallest neighbor is L, so that's five. And now we're at a dead end, so we backtrack to H, backtrack to G, backtrack to C, backtrack to F, and then we go off in the other direction now. Smallest neighbor is E, so that's edge 6. Smallest neighbor is B, that's edge 7. Smallest neighbor is A, that's edge 8. Smallest neighbor is D, that's edge 9. We're at a dead end, we backtrack, backtrack, backtrack. We're now at E, smallest neighbor is I, so that's edge 10. And smallest neighbor is J, that's edge 11. Now we can go ahead and put this information in our DFS. So the fact that I've labeled the edges makes it easier to just do the DFS on the graph itself and now come back and redraw them here. And so there's our depth first search spanning tree. Now we can add our back edges in. There was a DB back edge. So I find D in the list and draw that back edge up to B. Then there was the DE one. So that's this one here. And then there was the EJ one. So there's that back edge. And the JF. And then the FG. And then lastly, KG. So you can see me drawing over top of them in my original graph. And that's just so now I know I haven't forgotten any edges. It's very easy to forget an edge. It's just to miss it if you're not marking them off in some way. So I've just marked them all off, and now I know I've got all my edges. So what I've got over here is I've got T plus the back edges. So this is my full graph G now drawn out. And now we go on to step two of the algorithm, which is we get our pre-order traversal. And what's our pre-order traversal? Well, it's going to be F, C, G, H, K, L, E, B, A, D, I, J. So there's our pre-order traversal. We can imagine a little pointer walking us along as we go through it. And all I do is for each vertex, as I move along this traversal, I process the vertex, the edges coming, the back edges coming down from them, and then updating their labels. So for F, sitting here at F. Here's a back edge that's going down, so I update the labels along it. So that becomes a 1 and a 1. Are there any other back edges going down from F? Yeah, there's this one here. And so that first edge is 6, so I update all of the edges along that path from F down to J with a 6, including the back edge that comes back up. And now we've dealt with F now we can go on to C. No back edge is going down. G has a back edge going down. And so we update that. That becomes a 3. And this has a 3. 
What about H? No back edges going down, no back edges from K, L. Uh, how about E? Well, there's one coming down here. So then I update all the edges along that path. Seven's the, f the label on the first edge, so seven, seven, seven along the back edge. Are there any other back edges coming down from E? Yep, there's this one here. And so all the edges get updated with the edge label on the first edge there, which has already been updated, so it's a six. So that should be a six, which it is already, and then this back edge should get a six as well. So that's a six, and that's every back edge coming from E. Does B have a back edge going down? Yes, it does. And so I update all of the edges along that path, including the back edge coming up. They've already been updated to sevens, and so that one gets a seven as well. And we should be done at this point because A has no back edges going down, D doesn't have any back edges going down, neither do I or J. So we have processed all of our edges. And now we can go ahead and list what are our articulation points. Well, now we scan through. Which are the vertices that have different edges coming in that have different labels? So we can just go through them one at a time. So we'll start. F has different labels, G has different labels, H has different labeled edges coming into it. That finishes the left part of the tree. E has different labels going into it. There's a seven, edge seven, and an edge six going into it. But every other vertex has the same. So there's our APs. How about our biconnected components? Well, I'll look at the components that have all edges of one. And the way I do this is I just look at the vertices, F, C, and G, and then the edges that connect them. So then I look back to my graph, and I find F, C, and G, and there's a biconnected component. So it's going to look like C, F, and G. So I try to draw it as resembling how it looks in the original graph as close as possible and its position. And that was all the edges were labeled ones. What's next? Well, we have all these edges that were labeled threes. That's G, H, and K. G, H, and K. So that's that part. And so I've got a G, H, and K. And they were all labeled with threes. And then I have this one down here, the edge labeled with a five. And that went from H to L. So I've got an H and I've got an L, and that had a label of five. And then we've got this portion that has all these labels of six on them, and that consists of vertices F, E, I, J. F, E, I, J, so that's this part right here. So I've got F, E, I, and J. And those were all of the ones that were labeled with a six. So I could put sixes on all the edges, or I just put one six in there just to signify that they came from all of the sixes in the, in the diagram. And then the last one, we've got all the sevens. So that's E, B, A, D. And so I'd really like to draw it up here because it's kind of hanging off that E. So I will just move this word BCs a little bit away so I could fit it in there. So it's E and then B and A and D. And this gets a label of seven. And so there we go. We've got our biconnected components. There's one, two, three, four, five biconnected components. And we can see the articulation points as well. So I'm gonna highlight the articulation points in our diagram. That's an articulation point. This was an articulation point, this was an articulation point, and this was an articulation point. Those are probably things that we could have seen almost immediately when we look at the graph. You know, by inspection, we can probably pick these things out. We could probably find the biconnected components as well um, because the graph is small. But this gives us an algorithm that we can then implement, and no matter how complicated the graph is, this is an algorithm that will produce the articulation points and the biconnected components and do it very efficiently as well.
All right, so thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.